For me, there's always an irony to kind of have a, um, a program, a part of our program about China's outward investment. Because as many of you know, my first job after I left the State Department was representing U.S. companies in China. So America's outward investment. And the one lesson that I learned from representing those U.S. companies was that trade is just trade. You sell, a, you sell goods, you buy goods. The relationship should continue, but it doesn't necessarily have to continue. Investment is marriage. That you have to build that relationship. So actually, investment into China, U.S. investment into China, has actually built a constituency for constructive U.S.-China relations. So that we have Qin Shao today talking about China's outbound investment, which is so important today, leads me to believe that as this investment continues and as Chinese companies get married to their investments in the United States, that is going to become a new pillar of constituencies in support of constructive U.S.-China relations, that the Americans that the Chinese are going to deal with when they invest are going to become more supportive of the relationship. And to talk about this today, we could have no one who has a better experience than Dr. Qin Xiao, despite having his Ph.D. in economics from Cambridge University in the U.K. He has had an unbelievable career, not only being chairman of China Merchants Group and China Merchants Bank and Citic and Citic Industrial Bank. You know, he is one of the truly great thinkers about China's economy and China's economic policy. So I'm thrilled to welcome Qin Xiao to talk about China's outward direct investment. Uh, I said I uh, will start with some fingers and facts. Uh, first of all, the uh, China's o ODI reached U.S. dollars about uh, 120 billion this last year, and with uh, about more than 20 percent growth year to year, ranks third in the world for the second uh, consecutive year. That's is, uh, that's the flow of last year. Uh, last year's flow probably. Uh, uh, will, will they uh, surpass the, uh, the inflow, I mean the, o, uh, the FDI for, from China for the first year. And uh, if you look at uh, the, uh, the, the longer period of time from uh, 2006 to uh, 2013, the, uh, the compounded average growth rate will be 32.8%, uh, 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 which is quite dramatic. Yeah, that's uh, the first page I, I we already had. Uh, then uh, the the ODI stock that, that's flow that's stock stock is uh, reached uh, US dollar six hundred sixty uh, billion ranking eleven uh, worldwide. End of the last the year before, uh, Chinese investors have uh, established. Uh, uh, 25,000 enterprises overseas in uh, over 184 uh, countries or regions. ODI accounts for only for 10 percent of China's total overseas assets. That's a different concept. In terms of the stock, a relatively smaller uh, population com compared with uh, China's huge foreign reserve assets. Uh, ODI. Break down by industry, uh, the, the, the ranks from uh, the business services, uh, financial, uh, wholesale and retail, manufacturing, which accounts for more than 80% uh, of, uh, of the total uh, outbound. Uh, break, down, break down by countries, uh, we forget about those uh, Kim Island, uh, BVI, and uh, start from the United States, Australia, Singapore, United Kingdom, uh, those countries. Uh, 
then uh, uh, the, 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 the main uh, investment bodies. Uh, in the financial industry, uh, most of them are, are state-owned banks uh, or state with major uh, controlling share or large share. In the uh, non-financial sectors, uh, about half to half. But last year, the or year uh, or before last year, the uh, 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 private sector surpass uh, SOEs become a major one. I, I believe that will be the future for next decade. Uh, the uh, the something about the the, the ODI in with with USA with this country, uh, China's uh, uh, ODI in the United States has been growing rapidly during the recent years. According to the Chinese official data, China had uh, invested US dollars 3.87 billion in the United States in uh, uh, 2013, surpassed the US 2.82 billion. Uh, so there's more FDI from China to US than from US to China uh, in the year of uh, uh, 2013. At the end of uh, 2013, China's ODI stock, in terms of stock, U.S. is still much bigger than China. Uh, uh, but Chinese, one, uh, Chinese uh, ODI to the United States uh, is amount to uh, 21 billion uh, as the total stock. American stock about something about 300 billion. Uh, and uh, they continue. They are, in terms of the China's ODI stock in the U.S., the top four, top, top five sectors are financial industry, manufacturing, mining, wholesale and retail, and real estate. Uh, that's uh, some general pictures, uh, facts and figures. Uh, shows the uh, emerging uh, uh, of the ODI of China, and showed the structure, the composition, uh, the flow, and the stocks. Uh, some of observations. Uh, first of all, the ODI in uh, manufacturing sectors or industries uh, is not very active in China. Uh, it, it's, it's, it does not show the, 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 as a world factory or a big country for manufacturing. Uh, it's, it's not uh, compared to that, uh, not really representing Chinese uh, industrial power. The, the problem will be, uh, could be uh, uh, the, 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 those, uh, 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 the China still in the, uh, in the low end of uh, value chain, uh, so cannot uh, let the, the, the true uh, international uh, uh, transnation uh, companies can uh, ship in their value, value chain uh, vertically and horizontally globally. Currently, there are a few large Chinese uh, multinational companies that can control the upper end of the value chain and form the vertical integration, as I explained before. Uh, the, the, another observation is China's ODI stock in mining is relatively high, about 20%, including a strong motivation in seeking uh, natural resources overseas. However, some of them, maybe most of them, uh, maybe uh, not in the right uh, cycle, right time. So they are suffering some problems now because the, the low price of commodities. Uh, at the same time, China's ODI uh, in the financial sectors uh, is also relatively high. Uh, takes about 18%, but mainly concentrated in banking sector rather than in the securities, insurance, and other financial industries. Uh, investment in the securities and insurance is uh, relatively low. Uh, service industry, small and uh, scattered. Uh, uh, with more uh, in size, uh, but the investment in utilities sector, say uh, transportation, telecommunication, and the logistic infrastructure, 
uh, have already started to attract investment. Uh, currently, it's, uh, it's not a big portion, but has a big potential. Investment in technologies, high tech in particular, regardless of the software and hardware, uh, now reached a significant scale. That's, that's the observation. Uh, let's talk about one bet and one job initiative. Uh, the Xi Jinping raised uh, the, 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 the strategy or initiated the strategy, one bet and one road. Uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, it's, 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 it's been called this uh, uh, New Silk Road Economic Belt and uh, Maritime Silk Road, which will connect China with Central Asia, Europe, and South Asia. Uh, China promoted the, uh, to establish of the Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank Bank and the BRICS Bank, targeting infrastructure investment along the one belt, one road, and encouraging more Chinese enterprises to participate. The one belt, one road initiative is a grand overseas strategy for the next decade for Chinese company. Uh, this map shows what we mean by uh, one belt and one road. Uh, this coverage. Uh, current uh, direct investment in this region is, uh, is quite small. Uh, account for 12 billion uh, in uh, 20, 2013. Uh, account for 11.7 of total investment. Uh, by the end of the uh, year before, uh, direct investment stock was uh, uh, 76 billion, uh, accounting only for 11 percent. However, ODI to uh, uh, related countries has been growing uh, remarkably since uh, 20, uh, 2011, if you look at the curve. Uh, the, the strategy is aimed mainly at the increasing the needs of the uh, regency structure. According to the, to the uh, Asia Development Bank, there is a huge infrastructure gap or shortage in, in this area or region. And the use of Chinese expertise in infrastructure, construction, high speed rail, ports, road, etc., has much room for development. Initial funds for the one belt, one road will be mainly backed by China's foreign exchange reserves uh, and be implemented via Asia Infrastructure Investment Fund, BRICS Bank, loans, and other development financing. Under this initiative, China China's overseas investment is expected to grow rapidly in the coming years. The goal is, first of all, to uh, provide funding, uh, technical, and uh, management support for infrastructure projects in this region. Second, to digest China's uh, domestic excessive capacity and boost China's infrastructure and equipment export. Third, to encourage Chinese uh, multinationals to go abroad and to participate in the international competition. The last one, to promote regional economic cooperation and development. Some issues and risks. So it's a first one is the, the, the role of government and enterprise. Uh, the government should speed up the negotiation on regional free trade agreement uh, or bilateral investment protection agreement, promote uh, trade and investment facilities and uh, provide services for 
ODI of Chinese enterprise. Also, the government should uh, probably uh, handle potential geographical issues, creating a better environment for enterprise to play. The uh, government should not uh, intervene in business decisions. Enterprise should focus on uh, commercial interests instead of uh, undertaking uh, political and foreign affairs mission. Actually, that's a little bit, com it's, it's a problem. Uh, some com company claims they represent in the country to, to secure some resources or to try to uh, obtain some high tech. Uh, and and, and the, 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 there is no di clear distinction between the, the company got the mission from the government or purely commercial co companies. So they confuse the market. So I think the, you want to uh, have a good marriage, you must clarify your, your, your function or your role. Uh, public commercial uh, attribution, attribution disputes. Enterprise with uh, function to provide public goods may have preferential loans and uh, related policy support from a government. Commercial enterprise should be aimed at profit maximization and profit making and must uh, assume sole responsibilities for its own profit and losses. Should uh, the nature or the functions of the two kind of enterprise should uh, uh, distinguish. That's also part of the PPT as uh, uh, conditions. Uh, improving the uh, structure of uh, China's ODI. Uh, the manufacturing portion should be increased uh, and the uh, infrastructure or utility should be increased and the value chain, uh, the position on the value chain uh, should be uh, upgraded. Uh, some legal uh, uh, issues, a lot of them, I just select some of them. Uh, uh, Chinese companies often lack experience. Uh, just Lu Feng said, we are in the transition from rule by law, rule of rule by people or rule of law. Uh, so we, we should fully understand or aware the importance of uh, the law. Uh, there are lots of laws. In particular, Chinese enterprises should uh, pay attention to the uh, legality of certain operations such as anti-bribery law money laundry laws, and carefully deal with the country targeted by West countries, sanctions, and the ban. Uh, there are some uh, geopolitical uh, risks, including uh, risk, uh, uh, risk associated with politics, war, nationalization, Breaches of uh, contract, etc. The the the, the, the written recovers of one belt and one road. Most of the countries is uh, is uh, is uh, pretty high political risks and other risks. Many acquisitions are blocked by host countries' government under the national security consideration, including this one. Uh, foreign sentiment of uh, China's. Uh, threats act as a barrier to China's going out a uh, policy, especially for large SOEs. There are social, cultural, and regional, regions, uh, religious conflicts. Uh, as a basically non-religious country, Chinese people uh, sometimes may lack understanding and respect for host countries' uh, cultural and uh, religion customers. A labor issue. There's no truly independent uh, trade union in China. Chinese enterprises usually lack of experience to deal with their labor uh, rights issue. Cultural 
integration. Uh, the U.S. Business School, uh, uh, India's Tata Group's acquisition of uh, uh, Land Rover, as well as uh, China's acquisition of uh, Volvo, have been used as uh, case studies to uh, analyze the differences in the cultural integration, products development, and uh, uh, human resources after merge. While Land Rover had significant success, the Volvo acquisition were not definitely a failure, has been uh, comparatively uh, and uh, uh, well been. Some of the China's overseas acquisitions have often ended with fail, failure, such as TCL's acquisition of uh, Palm TV business and uh, Arctel mobile phone. Uh, uh, Sec acquisition of Singapore Motors um, and Pingan's acquisition of uh, Fortis Pingan's. The issue of cultural clash described to be a uh, high uh, lighted and uh, discussed in depth. We paid some tuition, paid some cost in previous years, so we must draw the license from them. Outlook. China has already become a major uh, economic power in terms of GDP, foreign trade, uh, input and export, FDI, uh, foreign reserves, uh, manufacturing, so we expect the rapid growth, which is much lagging behind, behind I mean, the outbound investment compared with other uh, areas. So we expect a rapid growth of Chinese outbound cross-board capital initiatives activities in, this, in the coming decades. The one belt and one road initiative can be seen as a uh, concrete going abroad plan and should lead to a, a period of a rapid expansion of China's overseas direct investment in, this, in the region. Possible developments. In the process of China's uh, capital account liberalization and due to the uh, slash global econo economy, asset price may be a uh, and uh, value, which may uh, provide China's uh, com Chinese company with uh, buying opportunity. cross board extension of China's uh, firm will help digest excess domestic capacity, accelerating the uh, upgrading and adjustment of uh, industrial structure, encouraging effective use of foreign exchange reserves and uh, exert the positive impact on global and regional uh, geopolitical politics. We expect the shares of overseas investment in manufacturing and infrastructure to rise significantly, while China's ODI in the financial sector will maintain in uh, is uh, rapid growth uh, momentum. Uh, ODI flow could uh, suppose, uh, surpass uh, 350 billion by 2025. Uh, 20, Assuming the trend uh, continuing in the uh, upcoming years, uh, factoring in the development of over the uh, next decade, assuming 50% annual flow uh, growth before 2020, and 8 to 10% growth in, from 2021 to 2025. There are two phases, but the last six years was 38% uh, compounded growth rate, average growth rate. So the, uh, the possible 
conclusion will be uh, China's outbound direct investment flow may reach a level of uh, 350 to uh, 400 billion per year by 2025. This will be second in the world only after the United States. In terms of stock, China will accumulate over uh, three trillion US dollars overseas investment, while we're ranking China's uh, ODI stock within the uh, top five. Currently, it's, uh, top, it's uh, ranked number 11. So, thank you. So we have time for a couple of questions. Right here. Uh, Albert Golson from Indo Brazilian Associates. Um, China has a significant, uh, with respect to commodities, a significant investment in South America, particularly Venezuela. Um, they have about $40 billion in loans there. What, what is your forecast? What is the outlook for China with respect to their investments in Venezuela going forward? particularly with the oil prices being as low as they are? Uh, to answer these questions, uh, I think you, you must take into some uh, general trend. I think China will have a soft uh, landing from uh, current uh, status to a new normal, uh, which means we have less excessive capacity uh, uh, decline in uh, growth rate but a better quality. And the curve will be quite flat rather than it goes very sharp. A sharp one is not soft one. So uh, the, uh, the minerals, uh, China still have a big appetite to import minerals for their uh, manufacturing, uh, domestically and internationally uh, as a final market. Uh, but they were, they, they, they were, they were, they were gradually uh, go, uh, go uh, declining the, the total uh, import of minerals. What do you think the implications would be for this if the United States and China should conclude a bilateral investment treaty? Will there be diversion of investment that would have gone elsewhere that would go to the United States? Or what, what do you think would happen? Uh, I, I will answer, Stephen, answer in, in, in a different way. I will be uh, puzzled if there's no bilateral investment treaty between these two powers. So it, it's the normal thing. Whatever we do with other countries, the first thing we should do together. I think we need to go on to the next panel. So let me call up, thank you very much, Dr. Chin.